Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the process of meiosis as it proceeds through a diploid human cell. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a cell prior to, prior to meiosis in the stage of interphase. And I want to put a note in the upper left-hand corner that notice that there are 46 strands of DNA, 46 strands of chromatin, in this cell because this is the human diploid amount of DNA that is that are in cells. So if we actually just do a quick count just to make sure that I'm not making any of this up, we're counting through and we are finding 23 in black, 23 strands of DNA in black. This represents, the black color represents paternal DNA, DNA that you inherited from your father. And right now, the red strands of DNA are being added up. These are the maternal strands of DNA. Notice how there are 23 maternal strands of DNA in red plus the 23 paternal DNA strands in black. That's how we know there are 46 strands of DNA in this cell, just like in human diploid cells. So as we move into the S stage of interphase, notice what happens is the chromatin is copied and duplicated. So the 46 strands actually duplicates to form 92 strands. Well, now we head and enter into meiosis. Meiosis number one, there's a meiosis one and there's a meiosis two. There's two rounds of cell divisions in meiosis. So let's start with prophase number one of meiosis number one. So the nucleus will dissolve and what happens next is the chromatin will coil into chromosomes and I've numbered them. If you look closely there are two chromosome threes, one in black, one in red. There are two chromosome twelves, one in black, one in red. There's two of each chromosome number, one in black, one in red. And during the process of synapsis, these chromosome pairs, these homologous chromosomes will pair with one another. So notice what's happening here are the two chromosome sevens are drawn next to each other. The two chromosome twos are grouped next to each other. The two chromosome fives are grouped next to each other. These form groupings of what are called tetrads. There's one tetrad of, made up of two chromosome sixes. There's another tetrad made up of two chromosome 11s, and there's another tetrad made up of two chromosome 15s. Now there's 23 tetrads. I've just highlighted three of them. So why does this happen? Why does synapsis occur? Well, synapsis will set up what's called crossing over. And if we focus on the tetrad number two here, let's zoom on in and take a closer look at these two chromosomes. So what happens during crossing over is that enzymes will actually break off portions of the maternal and paternal chromosome and rearrange them. So if you notice, you have a mostly black paternal chromosome with a small piece of red maternal DNA on it. And then same with the red chromosome. The red chromosome is made up of mostly red maternal DNA in genes but there's a small piece of black paternal DNA in genes attached to it. So when we come back to our cell here, we can now zoom into, let's say, tetrad number six here, and let's, let's examine crossing over with tetrad number six. So like we saw before, enzymes will rearrange and recombine a little bit of the maternal and paternal DNA during the crossing over period. And let's highlight one more tetrad. Let's highlight tetrad number one and let's zoom on in one last time. So during crossing over, again, portions of the maternal and paternal chromosomes are rearranged with one another. This creates genetic diversity. And this genetic diversity is created in all of the tetrads. Watch the remaining 20 tetrads. They all experience crossing over. And this is what leads to the genetic diversity that we see in cells created by meiosis. 
So now that we're done with prophase number one, we're moving into metaphase number one. And what happens is the tetrads will be aligned along the equator of the cell. You might know that there are threads of proteins called spindle fibers that will attach themselves to the chromosomes. And the spindle fibers will pull the tetrads to the equator, along the equator or the middle line of the cell. Well, this takes us to anaphase number one. The spindle fibers will pull the chromosomes apart, splitting the tetrad. You know, one chromosome of the tetrad was pulled to the left, and the other chromosome of the tetrad was pulled to the right. And so as we move on to telophase number one, cytokinesis will divide the one cell into two cells, and sometimes even the nucleus will reform. Now, just for the sake of this, uh, this animation, I showed the nucleus reforming. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Well, now that we're wrapping up meiosis number one, we're going to move into meiosis number two. And meiosis number two begins with prophase number two. So if the nucleus reformed, then it will simply just redissolve. And as we move into metaphase number two, the chromosomes are once again going to be aligned along the equator or the middle line of the cell. Difference being, notice how it's not tetrads anymore. The tetrads were separated during anaphase number one. So now it's just the individual chromosomes that are aligned along the equator of the cell. And when we move on into anaphase number two, I hope you can predict what's going to happen. We know that one chromosome is made from two halves called chromatids. So the chromatids are going to be pulled to opposite ends of the cell. One chromatid of a chromosome was pulled upward, one chromatid of the chromosome was pulled downward by the spindle fibers. And so as we near the end, we come to telophase number two. Cytokinesis divides the two cells into four cells. The chromatids will uncoil into the loose linear strands of DNA known as chromatin. The nuclei will reform in all four of the cells. And so when we're done here, notice what we have. We have four genetically unique haploid cells. They're genetically unique because we experienced crossing over earlier. And they're haploid because notice in the upper left-hand corner, I made a note. In the upper left-hand corner, we started with, cell, with one cell that had 46 strands of DNA. But now these cells that are created only have 23 strands of DNA. And I'd like to prove that to you right now. So if we just look at the cell in the top left, I'm just going to make start counting strands of DNA. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 strands of DNA. But the one cell we had at the beginning had 46 strands, but this cell's only got 23. Same with the cell on the top right, same with the cell on the bottom left, same with the cell on the bottom right. So this is how meiosis reduces the chromosome number in half and creates haploid cells. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'd love to hear your comments in the box below. Thank you for watching.